Welcome back to another video. Short one today. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving and is uh, much fatter today than they were yesterday. I know I am. Uh, today I needed a little bit of um, paint to refill something that was out and it got me thinking about the different brands of paint and who needs what. So I went to my local Hobby Lobby and got me some refill um, testers paint. <clears throat> when it comes to model car paints, realistically, there, there are other brands, but there's three choices. You've got testers, you've got Revell, and Tamiya. And I thought I'd do a quick little video on what paints I use and who should use what and why. And there is no right or wrong answer. Use whatever you can. Um, if you're just starting out, testers is tried and true. I've been using testers since I was a little kid. I think a lot of us old old farts uh, have been. There's a couple of issues with it these days. Um, the the con the pro is the price. Like at Hobby Lobby, you can see right there, $1.99 for a uh, small bottle of it, um, 0.25 ounces. Um, but it works great, don't get me wrong. The problem is ever since Rust-Oleum bought this company, the selection has gone down, the colors have gone down, but the quality is still pretty good. I don't have much of a problem with it. I know some people bitch about it, but realistically, I don't see an issue with it. But like I say, the 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 amount of colors have gone down. And why is that? Well, in my estimation, there's a few different reasons. Number one, Rust-Oleum bought them out and they just wanted the name and make a few bucks off of it. Um, they don't really give a damn about the model car industry and um, they have sh shareholders to report to and this is just another lineup. And if they can streamline the colors that don't sell that well, that's more money in the bottom line. The second is, there's just less model car builders and model builders out there in general. Um, when I was a kid, you know, we didn't have all these electronics um, to play with. So we had to use our imagination. And so there's a smaller market for this type of stuff than there was when I was growing up. Um, that is the biggest issue we face, as I see it. Um so therefore, less products because there's just less of a market. Having said that, like I said, though, the testers works great. I, I use it um, a lot and will continue to use it as long as I can for certain colors and, and things. Comes in enamels and, and uh, acrylics, uh, uh, water-based paints. Does a good job. But what happens when you outgrow this and you want colors that you can't really get in this anymore? Now you have to step up to what um, the more medium to professional builders use. And you got a couple of options there. There are, there are others out there, I know, but these are the two main ones. Uh, oh, also another pro of this is it's available at Hobby Lobby, which... If you're in the free world, uh, you can pretty much catch a Hobby Lobby anywhere, but you can't go on Sunday. So next is Revell and Tamiya. So these are a little more special specialty companies. Uh, Tamiya coming out of Japan, which makes incredible stuff. Well, there's Tamiya USA and then Tamiya Japan. Um, and then Revell. Both do great work. All three really do great work. But in my estimation, these two uh, come in a, a better uh, variety of colors um, and really look nice. But they are twice as, ex as expensive. Let's start out with the Revell. So Revell changed their packaging um, this year. God only knows why, or maybe it was last year. Um, they come in these little square things where you just twist the cap sideways and there's your paint. Neat, huh? Yeah, well, it fucking sucks because if you turn it the wrong way, if you forget, whatever, you've had a couple of whiskeys, 
it spills out. It's just a mess. It doesn't seal that well. You can see all the dried up paint around the edges here. I don't like it. So, although I have the pretty much the full lineup, I... I'm doing away with this. I'm getting rid of it. I don't like the plastic. I just I just don't like how it's made. Um, and for the basically the same price point, uh, you can get Tamiya. Tamiya to me has the best range of colors. You can get it in, in enamel or the acrylics uh, water based. It's just a cleaner glass bottle. It seems more durable. Uh, when you open it up, it's got a little cap inside, which, there you go. I just, I just overall prefer this product. So, my estimation is this. If you're a beginner, or you rarely buy, or you rarely put together models, testers will do just fine. You can get a big kit of different colors for different prices, uh, uh, you know, basic kit, whether it be flats or in, or enamels or gloss or whatever, or even an entire kit, uh, or not entire, but most, a, a big lineup. It's cheap. I mean, $1.99 per, per bottle. And then, like I say, you get the kits and you save even, even more. Very nice product. I've, I've used it for, you know, like I say, probably 30 something years, 40 years. Um, and it's readily available anywhere you go. So don't be ashamed with it. Um, I am fairly advanced in my model skills and I still use a whole whole hell of a lot of it. Uh, but for me, I'm replacing all my paints time over time for the Tamiya's. Um, I have a bunch now already. You can get, uh, if you do a Google search, you can get the entire uh, lineup of Tamiya paints when available and it is hard to find um, because a lot of the colors sell out fast but for about 200 bucks you can get the entire uh, portfolio of Tamiya paints this one happens to be an acrylic you know there's other stuff like I use uh, Mr. Hobby uh, for uh, for uh, semi-gloss clears although I rarely use this stuff um, what do we got here? Tamiya Metallic Gray. There's just a whole lineup of colors that you can get with a Tamiya brand that I really enjoy. Uh, I got a flat white here, you know, and, and I've got a whole lot of it. So I'm not going to bore you with all of it. But for me, I stay away from this because the packing packaging is just absolutely sucks balls. Um, another con to the to, uh, to the testers is. With all the warnings and stuff on paint they have to put these days, the actual color, I'm going to try to zoom in there as best I can, is little bitty tiny, which shows up pretty good here. But when you're old like me and you try to look at that, I've got to get my uh, my uh, magnifying glass just to read what damn color it is. Let me see if I can find one from when I was young. Okay, here we go. Here's a good example. So... Here's one from when I was a kid. See, the whole side of it says dark red. You get to today's version. And because of all the warning labels and they have to put it in like three different uh, country uh, or three different languages. Good luck seeing that shit with your naked eye. So again, although I still keep testers on hand, I'm moving away from it. And I'm moving to Tamiya. But... Um, like I said, if you're a beginner or on a budget, testers is the way to go still. It always has been and always will be. Uh, because let's face facts. This is, or excuse me, this is two to three times as expensive as this. Yes, you do get more in this. Uh, but you can also get the same size bottles of uh, Tamiya as the testers. So hopefully this um, helps you out. I just wanted to do a quick video uh, because I was thinking about it. Um, I really don't have a whole lot of time to do a big video today. Uh, holidays coming up. I've got a lot of honeydews to do. I just got through putting up all my lights. My cat took down my tree. But anywho, give me a thumbs up if you like. Subscribe, ring the bell and all that good shit. And we'll be back for more.